Hey everyone, welcome to Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. This podcast is all about farmer's markets. Whether you're a farmer's market manager or a small farmer, food maker, or artisan selling at farmer's markets, you have found just the right podcast. I'm Kat Fields-White. And I'm Bridget Myers. We're longtime farmer's market managers, educators, and consultants. Get ready to catch up on all things farmer's market pros with us. Today we're talking about how farmer's markets can accommodate businesses started by the youngest entrepreneurs. There can be some challenges, but the kids are all right. Today's episode of Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast, is supported by Blue Owl Promos, helping market managers and vendors create additional income streams by supplying branded tote bags, hats, water bottles, and more to meet any budget. If you've attended Intense, the Farmer's Market Conference, you've seen mason jar mugs, reusable utensils, snazzy clipboards, and notebooks with the Farmer's Market Pro's logo in your swag bags, all from Blue Owl Promos. For more information on how to increase your income and your visibility, click the Blue Owl Promos logo on the resource page at FarmersMarketPros.com. All right, welcome back to Tent Talk, everybody. Here we are. Here we are. Back at the microphones, in between conference planning and market managing and all the things. The holiday hoo-ha and all the things. That's right. But this yes. is the most fun thing we do. That's right. We're excited to talk about this topic, too, because we've been getting a lot of questions just for months and months about this and just in general. So time to address. It's a trending thing. That's right. So, yeah, but today we're discussing youth vendors at the market, a topic that comes up regularly in our online farmer's market community. Yeah, we've heard that from so many people. Some market managers love seeing the kids out at the market running businesses, mm-hmm. and they create special youth days at their markets. And other managers have big reservations about that. And we, well, I'm speaking for you and me, but I think it's true, we fall somewhere in the middle. Yes, I yes. would say that's true for myself. Yep. Mm-hmm. So let's chat about our thoughts and also what we've heard from other farmer's market pros. All right. So what are we talking about when we're discussing youth vendors? Is this seven-year-olds with a lemonade stand or a teen who's come up with a new recipe for chocolate chip cookies? Yes. Yes. <laughs> all yes, of the above. All of the above. Yes. <laughs> or how about somebody approaching adulthood? You know, they're kind of on their way. Maybe it's a high school grad even, or somebody in early college years, and they're testing the water as an entrepreneur, though they're technically still too young to meet some of the legal requirements to form a business. Exactly. That would would still be a youth entrepreneur. Yep, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we've seen a lot of examples. So Sarah Marshall's daughter, Adeline, has her own business, Adeline's Bunny Puffs. I think those are dehydrated... Like a fruit Fruits thing. that puff up. Yes. yes. They're mm-hmm. super cute. <laughs> really good marketing logos and, and signage and things. She doesn't have her own booth, but she sells alongside her parents in their Marshall's hot sauce booth. Yeah. And she was inspired, of course, by watching her mom. Yeah. Um, and that's a clever way to do it. That is. Mm-hmm. And then uh, sort of the opposite, uh, Adeline was inspired by her mom and then started a business. Sharice McGill, Mm -hmm. who was the executive director of Farmers Market Coalition that we lost earlier this year, was a market manager at the Lansdale, Pennsylvania market years ago, um, you know, probably five or six years ago. And her daughter, Madison, who was, oh gosh, Maddie was probably like 15 at the time, um, applied to sell lemonade. And she couldn't do that because the Lansdale market had a requirement that you had to use local ingredients and lemons are not particularly local to Pennsylvania. Um, But what she did was she figured out that she could get fruit from other farmers like peaches and apples and what have you and infuse her lemonade with that local fruit juice. And that made it a local product. So her mom had to let her in. (laughs) And she presented a whole business plan and had her profit and loss projections figured out and how she was going to source her local ingredients and what she was going to make and and her graphic design for her booth banner. And so Sharice let her in. And then she was so successful that Sharice was inspired to start her own um, French Toast Bites business, which became a big thing in Philly. Oh, yeah. Huge. Yeah. Wow. So it's interesting. So she was inspired by her youth vendor. Yes, for sure. Um, Yeah, and we've seen this even uh, my own daughter at our farmer's market. Um, When I worked for you at the Little Lily Mercado, we had a a popsicle vendor there, Viva Pops. So Lisa owned that business and she she needed somebody to, you know, take over the booth at the market. And so my daughter, Naomi, she was about 13 when she started doing that. Um, Another neighboring vendor, Daniel, with uh, artisanal cheeses that he sold there at the time, he would pick up the Viva Pops popsicle cart 
at the Viva Pops shop because she used his goat cheese to make a Viva Pop. Oh, this and is such so, a synchronized <laughs> operation. Yeah, so it's all like one big family, really. And he would bring it to the market. I would bring Naomi to the market with me as I was going to work. And she would set everything up and she would sell pops all day. And then Daniel would take the cart back for her. So she ran the whole thing. Lisa didn't come to the market. And so Naomi didn't own that business, but she ran that booth space at the business. Right. So it was still Lisa's permit and mm-hmm. Lisa's insurance and all that. Yeah. Do you remember how she got paid for that? Did she get a percentage of what she sold? Ooh, uh, I think she did because we had to count how many pops she sold. I think she did get a percentage of that. And then what Naomi also did was put a tip jar out that said college fund. And I will tell you what, she made, I think, like a thousand something dollars for the summer that she worked there. And we put that in her college savings account and she just graduated this past May. She used that money for her college. (laughs) So funny. Viva college education. Or Viva pops. I mean, it probably paid for like two textbooks, but... um, (laughs) But yeah, that was such a great and it was such a great learning experience for her and taught her so much about, you know, running a business, being professional, when she needed to take bathroom breaks and, you know, what to wear to work and all those things. So it was really great for her as a kid. I think that customer service experience, too, is really good, especially for shy kids. Yes. You know, I remember actually your older sister being very shy as a kid. But when she would work in our restaurant, she was playing that role. And Mm -hmm. so it was easier for her to talk to people. And then that habit formed to where it was easier in her real life to not be quite so shy with people. And I think Naomi had a little bit of that, too. Yeah, for sure. It helps them come out of their shell. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of good things about encouraging younger people to be in business. Mm -hmm. The Woodland Park Farmers Market in Colorado, um, they say that their Young Entrepreneurs Program is hugely successful. They say it's one of the most productive things they do as programs. And they've got a lot of interesting programming at that market. But they encourage kids aged 8 to 18 to test and sell their product ideas at the farmer's market. Um, as part of sort of a entrepreneurial education program. They charge them a reduced booth rate, and they cover insurance costs for those booths with an umbrella policy that they were able to negotiate with their insurer. They even supply tents for some of the young vendors. I don't know if they charge them extra for that. They say it's um, based on availability, so I guess they just have only so many tents. But if somebody's struggling to get started, they help them out with the tent too. So they really support them. Wow, that's a great program. What a wonderful thing to be able to give, you know, young startup folks or just kids interested in running these types of businesses that exposure. Yeah, it's great. And helping them along the way with the insurance and the equipments and things like that. Yeah, because they do need a little bit of help. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's going to have to be a parent or an adult involved in these businesses for a a number of reasons that we'll talk about in a minute. A not so successful example, um, we had a manager that was really struggling with how to respond to a 14-year-old who wanted to be a vendor, and more pointedly to that young person's father, who was apparently really sort of aggressive and disrespectful when she was trying to outline the requirements and you know what kind of involvement the parents would have to have and what kind of involvement they shouldn't have. I think the younger person was applying in a, a product category that was sort of saturated and where she would consider taking the youth vendor for a certain amount of time to give them an opportunity the parent was kind of pushy, wanted to go over her head to her board and just, you know, was not fun. And and at the end of the day, she got to the point where she felt like she wouldn't mind having the youth vendor, but she sure as heck didn't want dad on, the, on site. <laughs> so she was trying to figure out how to kind of navigate that whole application process with them. Yeah. But then when she asked about it in our community, a whole bunch of our other farmers market managers that participate there jumped in to say how much they love the idea of youth vendors and the varying degrees to which they're doing things that allow kids to have an opportunity like that. Yeah, I think it depends on like your mission for the market and how you see bringing those vendors in. I think no matter how you're doing it, you're not going to want to deal with somebody who's pushy. I mean, that could be a youth vendor's father. It could be just a regular vendor. It could be the spouse or business partner of somebody that you work with. I mean, that does happen. We have grown up vendors who yes. we have that issue. <laughs> one one spouse can come to the market. The other one needs to stay in the background doing prep. <laughs> yes, not a lot. Please stay on the farm. <laughs> so, I mean, that happens all the time. But I think when you're talking about a parental role, activating a parental role within the market, it just it can add a little layer of complication and not always a bad thing, but just something to be aware of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's actually an organization that runs, can't remember their name, but they're called like Young Entrepreneurs Markets. I think they've Mm. asked us sometimes if they can come into our space, but they need a huge amount of space and it's not something that's compatible with us. But I think they are doing one 
close to us. I, they're based in Utah, and they do them all over the country. Mm-hmm. And they have really specific rules about how much involvement parents can have, because the whole idea of their program is to encourage entrepreneurship in kids. And so they'll say in their market rules, um, the parents can't make sales. They can't have customer interaction, because the whole idea is that it's all kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting thing. I think that that's... That's really the best way for the kids to learn, too, sure. because if they're really going to go into business, like they're not going to bring their parents all the way along with them. Maybe. One wouldn't think. Well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of parents, I've some, somehow just been this has been happening a, kind of a lot lately. I don't know what it is about this season, but folks have been calling like a woman will call and say, hi, I'm calling to get some information about your market. I go, OK, do some preliminary questions. And then it turns out like her daughter has a lemonade business or like a empanada business and her daughter is an adult and has her own business and but the mom is calling to get the information and so that's puzzling to me you know I have that same thing come up sometimes with people looking for jobs have you had that I've had that one time I think yeah yeah. I've had it a number of times and people call and say oh my son's looking for a job and what are the hours and what do you pay and and I'm like well kind of the first requirement for getting a job is being able to talk to a potential employer because otherwise if he doesn't have the skills to talk to me his skills at talking to my customers or working with the rest of my team or my vendors are probably maybe not ready yeah you know that kind of thing but yeah you know what i've had those kind of calls too where it's an it's somebody calling for another young adult Mm -hmm. about establishing a business at the market and I think you just have to be so motivated to be a small business at a farmer's market or anywhere. Um, I don't know, relying on somebody else, especially your parent, to do all the exploration about that and to do the outreach to make that happen. That doesn't bode well to me if it's truly the young person's business. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I keep, I'm going to ask the next person specifically some direct questions and just to figure out what is the kind of motive here. But maybe, they don't think that the person that they're talking to on the phone is the one who's going to make the decision if they come in and they're just doing like information collection at that point. But it's like, well, you're talking to the market manager. And if this person is having their parent call me, that's probably not somebody. I mean, we run such a high level professional business. It's probably not somebody that I want to bring into the market just because I would be skeptical that the mom would call me the morning of the market and say that Susie's not feeling well. You know, like I just got that vibe. Like I get that's the vibe I get. Or they'll come up to the info booth too. Like two people will come up and they'll say, oh, we want some information about getting a booth. I go, okay, great. And they'll say, yeah, my, you know, daughter has a a business that she wants. And the daughter is standing right there and not talking to me. So I think, you know, maybe this goes along with the folks just don't understand farmers markets and they think maybe everyone just kind of shows up and there's not really anybody in charge and someone just kind of charges them a fee and that's it. And there's not more involved than that. I don't know. It's very perplexing, but I will say on the same note that one time many years ago, someone came to the market. I know you and I were in the booth and he came to the market with his mom and they were kind of both talking to us, but the mom was definitely there and he was in college and they were asking about information for him to sell like his textiles. He does beautiful like art and blankets. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. And he's and we we're I remember they left and we were like, OK, bring your mom to the market. And then they ended up going through all the application process. It took a, wh- a I while. I think they did Vendor 101 even. Yes, I think he took Vendor 101, which was great. But um, it, yeah, so we were like, okay, that's never going to work out. Took Vendor 101. Like, I don't think this is going to happen because he's with his mom. He ended up applying and going through the whole application process. Like, started as a sub. He is in the. He is still in the market right now. He does. I know who you're talking about. He does yeah. beautiful products, and yeah. he's actually a terrific vendor. So wonderful. So Very lovely. conscientious. Yeah, He'll just... contact you weeks and weeks ahead if he's going to miss a day, and he's sort of real solicitous about it. Is it okay? Should I find another vendor to sub in for me? Oh yes. I mean, he has never been late. He never calls out. He pays on time. I mean, this is like a plus vendor. But one of those people that came with his mom and his mom works the booth sometimes for him when he's out. Like she's like works for him there. Not a lot, but so cute. I think they're just kind of talked about getting this business started together, but it's really his art. He does it. Um, I feel like part of it was the whole thing of developing a way to sell your art. I feel like that was a project in one of his last classes in college where he has to kind of prove his concept. Yes. So he was doing that. Which, but, which folks come and talk to us about that. I mean, we've done like interview with college kids or like they'll come talk to me at the market. I'll tell them how the market works just like for a project. 
but he really ended up applying and and is still in the market. He's been there for like five or six years. Yeah, so, it's amazing. Yeah, and he's lovely. So so sometimes it works out when the parent comes along. But I will say for the most part, it gives me um, just like weird weird vibes that they're not going to be really tuned in to being the professional in the situation and they're going to rely on a parent to do that for them. And I think for most markets, that's not necessarily going to work. Yeah. I'm sure it's it comes from good intentions. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's one of those things where the parents just really trying to inspire the kid to reach out and and move a little farther ahead and make something of this business idea that they've got. Or, you know, maybe they just want them out of that house. I don't know. <laughs> They're like, please, let's go. They're in a rush to get out. <laughs> What's that movie where the mom keeps trying to get get a kid a job and maybe a wife so he'll move? Get out of that. Get off her couch. That's right. Well, maybe that's the we have vendors that bring their kids to the market with them to work their booth with them so they don't have their own business. But I think, you know, I'm thinking of Mitzi, who's at our market. She brings her daughters almost every single market. They are like the best employees of the whole market. They work the register all day long. They're so wonderful. Everyone in the market loves them. They're really hard workers, but they're like 10 and 12 years old or something. I would not be surprised at all to see at least one of those girls start their own business. They've been so good and they're just really entrepreneurial kids and very sales oriented and very responsible. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. Absolutely. And, And that is kind of a little bit of a different topic, kids working in their family's business. But I will say that we've got some family businesses at the market where the kids seem to be leading the charge. And the parents certainly have the responsibility as far as permitting and licensing, and they show up to work. But um, Salsa Calibri, yeah. you know, I feel like it's the daughters who really have pushed the business, put the business together, were excited about starting it. Mom and dad and both of the girls show up at, at most of the markets and work together. I think they've sort of divided and conquered now so that they can do two markets on one day and during busy days. But it's I really feel like it was the daughter's idea. The parents got on board and now it's just a beautifully synchronized family business and they work so well together. Mm-hmm. I just heard from them that... They live in an apartment complex where mom and dad are in one apartment and one of the girls is with a roommate in another apartment next door to them. And then the other one is upstairs. So oh, I mean, I they are this. together <laughs> night and day between the kitchen and home and, and the booths at the markets. But they all just really seem to enjoy being together. Oh, I just love them. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I think there's such great, like close knit families that work together at the market and sometimes they'll spin off and start their own thing or the kids are working really what's essentially the parents business. So a lot of that going on, which is really wonderful to see. Yeah, it's great. So there's a lot of pros to Mm -hmm. involving kids in markets. Huge goodwill in the community. I mean, when a kid sets up a booth at your market, you know their Little League friends are going to be out there buying their cookies and the their parents and all of their parents' friends are going to come out to support and, you know, maybe word will get around the school and you'll get that whole audience. So it does build kind of a new audience. Yeah. People love supporting kids. Yeah, it could it could be used as a marketing tool for sure. And just kind of job security maybe for your market. You want to teach these young people how to work in this space and educate them on markets. Not to mention all the exposure that all of those kids that are in the booths and their kid friends are going to have to farmers markets. I mean, right. bringing them on site. So that's really that's really such a great point to make. That's an enormous part. I mm-hmm. mean, you want to get people in the habit of shopping at markets and what better way than to have kids get really comfortable at markets and see all the people that come to shop and feel like, oh, of course, this is what you do. You shop at farmers markets. Exactly. Yeah. So what a great benefit. There are some tricky considerations, Yep. and this probably varies quite a bit depending on where you are because various cities and towns have differing levels of permit requirements and how strict they are about food permits and that kind of thing. But food safety generally across the board, almost wherever you are, they're going to require some kind of permit if they're selling food products. Now, we it's sort of a different issue if you've got kids coming in to sell friendship bracelets yeah. or something that they've knitted or, <laughs> you know, greeting cards. We had a, a kid apply, I think, one time to do that. So yeah. that's a little easier on this side. But when you're looking at uh, youth vendors that want to sell food, typically health department permits and certainly insurance are not available to be issued to people under 18 in almost every situation. So they're going to have to have an adult that sort of partners with them to carry those permits and that liability insurance. Now, I know some markets just sort of waive that for kids, but, you know, we're pretty big sticklers about this. And I I think it's a a function of living in California for so long where we're so litigious here and the regulations are so heavy, but we really couldn't host somebody that didn't have insurance. Even though it's a kid, even though it's fun, 
somebody can trip over their tent just like they can an, an adult vendor and the lawsuit is going to happen. So that's important to us. Exactly. I think just keeping that in mind, I mean, not getting caught up in the goodwill of it all and excitement to fostering these small businesses that are the kids are running, but really th- You need to think back on your business and protecting the market as a whole because it could cause a huge problem if you don't cover those bases. So just really remembering it's for the benefit of the entire market and everybody that's there if you hold everyone, including youth vendors, to the same kind of liability standard. And also adults that are taking on the responsibility of their kids' business, make sure that if you are that adult, that you are involved in making sure that they are preparing food safely and nothing's going to harm anybody and the labels are correct and all those things. I mean, if you're putting your name on that, it's really going to come back to you. So just maybe having a conversation with the parents and explaining just the seriousness of it. And yes, markets are fun and typically nothing bad is going to happen, but they need to make sure that they're prepared in that case. Yeah, for sure. sure. And it also, that addresses one of the other challenges of it, which is that you want to make things a level playing field for your year-round rain or shine grown-up vendors Mm -hmm. who are earning a living and supporting their families here. If you're allowing youth vendors in that don't have the same expenses because you're not requiring insurance or you're providing them with tents or, or giving them a lower space rent, you know, is that really fair to the bakery a few spaces down that's selling baked goods all the time and has to take expenses into account and how they price their products and and might be getting undersold by the kids that don't have the same level of overhead. Exactly. That's what I would be thinking out. Yeah. So that's a little bit tricky. Um, Payment processing, another technical issue. The minimum age for a Square account, and I'm pretty sure any of the other payment processors is 18 because you have to be able to sign for a bank account and, you know, and have your own responsibility on that. So you, you're going to need to have parents or another d- adult involved. And as the one manager brought up, um, some parents can feel a little entitled about their kids' businesses and whether or not they should be allowed into the market, maybe even more than they would about their own business. It's that whole mama bear, papa bear thing where somebody can call you a name, but do not talk to your child that way. And you can get kind of defensive and you want to protect your kids from getting their feelings hurt or being disappointed. And so sometimes... The adults don't play as nicely as they should when they're representing their kids in the application process. Yeah, I think kind of taking into account personality, which is one of the four P's that I always look at for any vendor to come into the market. Um, what, Run through those. So I look for personality, professionalism, product, and packaging. Right. Yep. So so for even for adult vendors, you know, that personality, are they going to mesh well with other vendors and with your team? That's mm-hmm. important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really important, really. Because, again, there's other folks there trying to make a living supporting their small farms, more, supporting their families with these businesses. You don't want to bring someone in just because it's cute and fun and makes you feel good. And then it ends up souring the market as a whole. So think all the way through that. Right. Yeah. So I think all of that adds up, in my mind, to the best model for this um, may be the markets that dedicate a certain day once or twice a year yeah. to highlight youth vendors. And that is, doesn't make it you know, an ongoing, disadvantageous situation for your regular vendors, for your adult vendors or farmers. Um, but it does provide, again, a huge amount of community goodwill. It actually turns it into a real marketing advantage for your long-term vendors because that lets them take advantage of all the press that you can get for doing a youth day and all the people that will come out to support the kids. They'll also get exposed to the year-round vendors that are going to be there next week. Yeah, exactly. And I think just on a practical side, especially if your market has a longer season, are kids going to be able to show up to the market every Saturday? I mean, thinking about my own kids' schedules, they have birthday parties and soccer games and things like that. So, I mean, there are there are definitely youth entrepreneurs that are really dedicated and want to be there every single week. But having a youth day a couple times a year or like once a quarter, um, I think could be just better for you and better for the, the youth entrepreneurs themselves. Yeah, more manageable for them. Mm-hmm. Also, if you're just doing it once or twice a year, you can really make it a program. I think that's kind of what the, the Woodland Park market does. Um, you have time then to help the kids navigate what they need to do this as a real business. So even if they can't get their own permits and the parents have to vouch for them, they're aware of what it takes for all the businesses that are at the market to do that or what it would take for them if they wanted to stick with this long term and and be a cookie mogul in their future. So you can really make it a learning experience. You can, you know, you could have a session with them on 
what the most effective way is to display your products and let them get to know that. That's something that they could apply to a lot of different things in life, whatever you know, kind of jobs they pursue. And then uh, another one that would be universally helpful for them, it'll be helpful for their youth market business, but also helpful for them as they move on through life and get other jobs is really spending some time with them to explain customer service expectations, tips on how to make better sales and how to present to the public and and what it takes to really be a small business. Yeah, a little handling rejection, like training on that, just because we know that farmer's market customers can sometimes be so brutally honest. And even if it's a kid, they'll probably give them their honest opinion, thinking that they're helping them. But I think sometimes kids can be a little more sensitive, although I've seen you know, vendors and certainly myself sensitive with rejection, but <laughs> it's a t- tool that's really useful. So I, so I think that'd be helpful for them. But as the market manager, you can talk to them about that. Maybe there's another vendor in the market that is interested in working as a mentor to them. So you could buddy them up and they could help teach them some things as well. So you've got a lot of resources at the market for sure. I think that'd be so cute. Um, kind of a mentor, you know, a grown-up baker helping the little kid baker and, mm-hmm. you know, a farmer helping. Sometimes we see farm kids Usually they just sort of incorporate it into their family's farm booth. But I'm aware of a lot of farm kids who have raised their own flocks of chickens, and it's really their project. Barbara Kingsolver talked about that in her uh, Animal Vegetable Mineral book about her daughter having this whole chicken business and had to do like a written P&L for her parents about what it was costing for the feed and taking care of the chickens and how much she was selling the eggs for and were they getting ahead or getting behind on the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, what a great, this is really like, There's a program, my son has done this camp a couple of times, like Junior Achievement Camp, where they do, they kind of make up businesses. They don't ever go do them, but they talk about how a business structure would work. He learned so much in that. And so I think teaching kids these kind of lessons, they can take that into any job that they go into in the future or just managing their own household expenses. These are really great tools and just kind of social skills that they learn. Yeah, so much more meaningful than than making you do word problems. (laughs) You know, let's let's work this out. And I've actually seen... Some schools that have done this as a whole grade level project where groups of kids maybe work together to develop businesses that would be in a market. And then they, one or two of them or a small group, actually are in charge of setting up the market. And they have to learn what the requirements are to be a market manager. And and that's lovely to see because, you know, all of us are going to want to retire someday. Exactly. Yeah, we got to bring that next generation in. So how are we doing that And how are we training them? Do we have the tools to train them? Should it be a part of our business model? Can we tap other people that are maybe in our sphere to help um, bring resources and help us as market managers and organizers? And then also these entrepreneurial kiddos that are coming in really having a desire to do this. I think it's a great plan. Uh, All great ideas have their own challenges and obstacles and their own charms. So what we need to do is work through it, make sure that our markets keep moving ahead and and living on into the future by fostering the next generation of farmers market vendors. Thanks for listening to Tent Talk today. And big thanks to Blue Owl Promos for supplying farmers market vendors and operators with everything from food packaging and uniform shirts to branded merch and for supporting Tent Talk, the farmers market podcast. To get more information or place your order, click the Blue Owl logo on the resource page at farmersmarketpros.com. Please leave us a review on your podcast app or wherever you listen to Tent Talk. Let us and others know how you're enjoying the podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of Tent Talk. Connect with fellow Farmers Market folks in our private Facebook group, the Farmers Market Pros Community, and follow us on Instagram at Farmers Market Pros. Find online education and other resources at FarmersMarketPros.com. Tent Talk is brought to you by Farmers Market Pros, where passion meets profit. Tent Talk is hosted by Cat Fields White and Bridget Myers and produced by Leandra Hayes, with original music by David Mead. Tune in next week for another great episode.